Welcome back to a new video. Today's review is on Only Murders in the Building, Season 3, Episode 7, entitled Cold Bro, with the official synopsis being Charles finds an unexpected source for a major clue. A Broadway icon comes knocking on Oliver's door, and Mabel forms an alternate trio to pursue a lead that sheds light on Ben's bro and Cold Bro history. And before I give out my review, Please like the video, dislike the video, click on notifications, follow me on Instagram, Letterboxd, and TikTok for more reviews. Episode 7 to me was a pretty good episode as more clues were presented, new red hearings being brought out, three more episodes before we finally find out who this killer is. Can't wait, but here we go. As the main plot for this episode just focused on the trio just doing their own things while not speaking to one another ever since the huge blowout from the last episode. Um, yeah, the episode basically starts off with just Uma. She has her own narration and we haven't really seen much of her in this season at all as Uma has just been living life and just being a kleptomaniac. But at the same time though, I feel kind of bad for Uma. Ever since Bunny's death, you can tell that Uma has definitely lost part of herself now that Bunny is gone. Like Bunny was one of her closer friends that she had to talk to, that she was on a that she had a nice relationship with. And with Bunny gone and with no one else that she really like gets along with, like loneliness alone like i just i feel pretty bad for uma honestly but the fact that she stole ben's handkerchief while there was no police around there was no one around like that is technically evidence like we just stealing important pieces of evidence now like i get it but at the same time though like how could the police how could anyone just do something like that literally but yeah um the trio still not on speaking terms charles he's just trying to live life i guess like he has really no one to talk to now now that everyone is not speaking joy still nowhere to be seen like i still feel bad for charles as well too because of his old age and not having really anyone to talk to now like it's just it's just a big mess it's just sad overall between all of these characters like makeup like makeup but charles finds out about what uma did with the handkerchief and i just think that it's interesting because the the handkerchiefs still has some huge pieces of evidence on all of them and yeah i just can't wait to see when they finally get that handkerchief if they get that handkerchief though um but in the meantime though oliver his episode in here was not bad he's trying to find charles replacement we have a special appearance by mr ferris bueller matthew broderick and matthew broderick seems like the perfect candidate to replace charles but at the same time though he is tweaking out he just crashes out completely when it comes to doing his parts as whenever he gets a role he tries to become that person he tries to become that role literally and physically and he was crashing out tweaking out just trying to make names just see just too perfect it was funny but at the same time though i can understand oliver's frustrations like it's just a role it's just a simple play you don't have to do this you don't have to do that like <sighs> crashing out over a freaking play is kind of sad to you when you think about it though mabel bloody mabel she's still trying to continue with the evidence she's still trying to continue on with this investigation and she tries to talk to dickie but this episode honestly just solidified dickie as someone you still have to look out for like he was definitely my top suspect all of this season but after this episode i don't know like this episode does confirm a few facts that dicky was definitely adopted loretta is most likely his mom and just 
you could say there was some motives if the if their motives like how he basically had to do everything for ben how he basically created code bro ben stole all of the credit and he basically had to clean up all of ben's messes whenever ben caused controversy or just caused trouble when it came to basically anything that could be a huge motive to kill somebody but at the same time though that could also just be a huge red herring and the fact that he brought that bloody handkerchief with all of the evidence either means that he's hiding something or he's just trying to protect um the cycles from getting it the crazy fans or whatever like you can see it from both ways honestly but yeah like dicky i really don't know now because of all of the suspects because it could really be anyone like you have your obvious suspects but would it be obvious would it be too obvious like at this point i just don't know and mabel forming the podcast by herself now with Tauber still involved it was always it's always good to see feel like it was definitely nice to see feel once again he seems to be doing good and his relationship with mabel is still pretty positive which is glad which is good to see like it's gonna take a little bit of time before the trio officially reunites charles oliver reunited i think it's just gonna take a little bit a little bit longer before mabel finally reunites but um yeah this episode though has some important evidence some more clues possible red hearings like i just don't know nowadays like i really don't know but yeah good episode um good performances matthew broderick was pretty good but crashing out over a simple play was not it Theo, always glad to see Theo. it was nice to see him once again after all of the crazy shenanigans from the first two seasons but yeah when it comes to my suspect list and what i think now like donna and cliff you never know nowadays they could have they could have probably killed um ben for either money to save her son from the negative reputations that the show could have possibly had like with donna and cliff they're weird their relationship is creepy you just never know nowadays um dicky he's still fishy to me no matter what like the motives of him possibly killing his brother for all of the things that he was forced to do to save ben like cleaning up the reputation clean up all of his messes stealing credit basically being treated as like a second class citizen for all of his life you could say that is good motive you could say that is a red herring but with him he's just going to be a suspect to the very end i don't care loretta um definitely fishy at times too like that scrapbook comes off as a little bit weird you could say she's looking to see how dicky is doing but still though it's definitely weird to have a scrapbook like that though and the fact that she wrote freaking pig and everything else she just comes off as fishy she just comes off as suspicious Tobert, i don't think he killed ben but i think he is still very suspicious though his possible connection with cinda possibly playing mabel to screw her over in a long deal you still have to look out for this man in my opinion though um but yeah like the cops in this season have off have been horrible like now that they're finally coming back to solve this crime to see what's going on is good but the fact that it took this long for them just to finally say you know what let's go back and see if there's something about this we'll see what happens but yeah episode seven pretty good episode three more episodes before it's finally revealed can't wait but as always though thank you for watching until next time